Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Photolia, Europe's best royalty-free stock images, vectors and video. In this tutorial, I'll be looking at masks, both in Photoshop Elements and Photoshop. So let's jump in and see what's what. So here I am in Photoshop Elements, and I've got this document with two layers, the sheet music and guitar, both of which, of course, you can get from the Photolia stock image website. I just turned that one on and off by clicking on the eyeball here. Now, if you're using Photoshop rather than Photoshop Elements, don't panic. It works virtually the same, but I'll point out some differences in just a minute of where to find various bits and bobs. OK, so what I want to do here is I'd like to see the guitar and the sheet music together. So I want to see the guitar through the sheet music. And for that, I'm going to use a layer mask. So making sure that sheet music is already selected, I'm going to click this icon just here, which is Add Layer Mask. Click on that, and nothing visibly happens to my image. However, in my Layers palette, you can see that on the active layer, Sheet Music, I've now got this white box with a blue square around it. Now, the blue outline means that I'm going to be working on the mask, because the white bit is the mask itself. Now, I already know, of course, that white has no difference at all, because it's made no difference at all. So let's go and get a brush. I'm painting on with black. I can now go along and paint on my mask. And you can see that I can reveal what's going on below it. When I let go, it'll update the mask on the layer palette. So you can see where it's black, I can see through it. And where it's white, I can't. It's a bit harsh and uh, a bit jaggy. Let's see if we can't do something about that. Well, I'm going to fill this layer with white, and white's my background colour, so Command or Control and Backspace will fill the layer with white. We're back to square one. Now what I'm going to do is get my gradient tool. And we can see that the gradient goes from black to white. So I'm going to start here and go from one side to the other, and then let go. And now we have this nice gradient going across and what we call feathering. Let's take a look at the mask and see what's going on. So there we go. So we already know that where it's black, we can see all the way through it, and where it's white, we can see nothing through it. And you can see now that where it has the variances in black and white depends on how much we can see through the mask to what's laying below. So where it was as much black as it is white, 50% grey, we can see the equal amounts of the sheet music and the guitar. And then either side of that depends on whether it's whiter or darker. Now we can use this with our brush as well. Again, I'm going to go and fill that layer with white, Control or Command Backspace. And I'm going to go and grab my brush again, but this time I'm going to make my brush quite soft. So bring the hardness right down, close that off. And now I can just make the brush a bit bigger using the right hand squared bracket there. And I'm going to paint on. And you can see now that I've got this very soft outline to my brush. And that's quite helpful. Of course, I don't think that looks as nice as the gradient did, but there we go. Let's have a look at the mask and see what's going on. So click on that. Oh, it's where it's black, we can see through it. Where it's white, we can't. But then we have this feathering between the two, so it nicely fades out between one and the other. Let's click on that to get it back again. Command backspace to make it white because, well, I like the gradient more. But I don't have to start one side. I can start here and go across. So everything to the right-hand side there is completely black and then it feathers into the white. I can choose my starting and ending point wherever I like. And of course, it doesn't have to be straight. It could also be a circle. It could be reflected, whatever I like it to be. OK, let's go over to Photoshop so we can see some of the differences. First of all, making the layers visible. Rather than putting a line through the eyeball, you just click on the eyeball itself. The layer mask, to make a layer mask isn't above it. It's below. It's right at the bottom of the layers palette there. And that's really all the differences. With the uh, gradient tool, you might have to check up here, make sure that reverse isn't already checked, but then it works exactly the same here as it does in Photoshop Elements. There we go. Exactly the same. 
There's lots of ways of using masks and of course you can be a lot more precise. In the next video we'll have a look at just how we do that. For now though, just remember that black makes a hole, white doesn't. So make a black hole through the mask so you can see what's below. I'm Eric Renault. This has been a video for Photolia. I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.